I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Have you really thought about what it would take to fake the moon? Would you believe that they put a man on the moon? Who? Hey, these guys. NASA. Oh, uh, there's NASA. overwhelming proof um, that it didn't happen. The moon? Yes. Yeah, they... the moon landing was fake. Who started the conspiracy theory about the moon landing being fake? I'm talking to you by telephone from the oval room at the White House. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object. People sometimes call it mankind's greatest achievement. I, I don't think it's mankind's greatest achievement. Completely so you convinced. think they did not go to the moon? No, I don't, I don't think that anymore. Oh. Hey guys, Dan Fuel, Mr. Great Dandalf the Grey. Now this is going to be part three of my Moon Landing is not a hoax videos, series of videos, which I was set a challenge a couple of weeks ago. I was basically doing a podcast, uh, I was a Moon Landing, what do you call it? I don't know, enabler, or you know, f fact finder. And then the other person I was on the podcast with who said, no, I, th I think the Moon Landing was fake. And then I said, no, it's not. So they give me a list of things to go through, the things that they think is the reason why it's fake. And over a course of a couple of videos in between my other stuff, I'm going to be going through every bit of that list and trying to figure out or debunk every single part which says the moon landing was fake. I've made two videos already. I'll link them down below if you want to go watch that first. This is going to be part three and we're going to be talking about the Van Allen belt. No, not him. Not him, that's someone else. But basically, we're going to discuss... I've, I've briefly covered this in previous videos, but in this one, I'm going to go into more detail, and we're going to discuss why the astronauts of the Apollo 11 missions, or mission, I should say, didn't just crumble into a radioactive mess whilst traveling through the Van Allen belt. Now, first of all, the Van Allen belt is a, two, two regions of radioactive particles in between our planet Earth and the moon. So I've drawn up a quick diagram just to show in detail what we're looking at. This is our planet Earth, right there. That is our moon, not to scale and probably not made of cheese. And that is the Van Allen belt, made up of two regions of ionizing particles, both with different varying amounts. Now, when people mention radiation, they think of, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to crumble into a biological fleshy mess if I go near this radiated object. I mean, most times you will. You know, that's just a fact. There's different varying versions of radiation. You've got ionizing radiation, which is alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, and x-rays. They, the, they are the dangerous ones, which we try not to go to near that much. You know, it can be very dangerous throughout throughout human history. Stuff has happened with them, which, you know, almost ended us quite a few times. Now, let's be honest, the, the biggest one in 1986. You could shut the f up and do your job. Which still could be a problem in about, say, 80 or 90 years. But, you know, who knows what we're gonna do then. Those versions of radiation consist of high energy protons and electrons, I think, I'm not sure. That kind of radiation, if you get a good dose of it, it will change your, your DNA, it will, basically penetrates you a fleshy substance of a body because we are the weakest thing on this planet if we didn't have the weapons we have. We are, simple, you know, basically. But that's the dangerous radiation. Now there's other forms of radiation which we come in contact with every single day. And they are non-ionizing radiation. Basically UV light, visible light, infrared light, microwaves, and radio waves. We come in contact with those ev pretty much every single day. And they are the, that's the kind of radiation which will vibrate and heat things up. UV lights, this is why gingers are clearly not from this planet, because gingers and fair-skinned people are not made for this planet, because UV hates us. But that kind of non-ionizing radiation, it's, we can take doses of that to a certain extent. You know, everything in large doses is going to harm us, no matter bloody what. We're just, like I said, we're just a fleshy substance with a bone in a structure and controlled by something in our head. <laughs> but 
But those are the two forms, or the two different factors of radiation. Ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. The kind of radiation which is found in the Van Allen belt is the ionizing radiation, which is the dangerous stuff. We don't want to fly through that. We do, but we don't want to. But first of all, let's find out who discovered the Van Allen belts. Like I said, it wasn't the guitar guy. James Alfred Van Allen was born on September 7, 1914 and died in August 9, 2006. He was an American space physicist. He was instrumental in establishing the field of magnetic spheric research in space. Try and say that fast after a couple of pints. I can barely say it's over. But he discovered the radiation or the Van Allen belt which was named after him, obviously, in 1958. He was the, one of the top scientists who try, you know, helped figure out how the astronauts were going to get through the Van Allen belt. There's a rumor going around the internet, and you, uh, this is mainly on like people who say it's a hoax, is that James Van Allen himself said we cannot pass through the Van Allen belt. There is zero record of him ever saying that. He was just there to say, look, it is difficult, but this is how you do it. So the Apollo 11 mission, it took three days from taking off from the planet Earth, going through the belt, going through space at about 15,000 kilometers per second, or miles, I can't remember now, and then eventually get into the moon about 72 hours later. I've drawn a small little diagram to just like sort of piece out the step-by-step -step of the Van Allen belt journey. So the Saturn V rocket, along with the command module on top, blasted off from planet Earth on July 16th, 1969. And that's when it got to the first part of the Van Allen belt, the inner belt, which is roughly 620 to 7,500 miles above the Earth's surface. Now this inner belt is the most dangerous part. This is the one with the highest particles, the highest energy, ionizing and radiation. And you know, this is the danger zone basically, out of the two belts. And this is the closest part of the belt to our planet. Going on to the second part of the belt, which is the outer belt, located 8,000 to 37,000 miles above the Earth's surface, is still harmful to the astronauts, but it's considered less dangerous as far as particles go. Throughout its entire three-day journey, 72 hours, astronauts spent a total of one to two hours in the Van Allen belt. This is how they minimized as much radiation exposure possible. They also, this is why they would time the flights. They wouldn't just go tomorrow. You know, they would time the pl plan months and months ahead, sometimes years ahead, to figure out the precise timing to go through this belt, what time to take off, what trajectory to take whilst going through the belt. They, they, they planned all this out, you know, far, far ahead in order to minimize the amount of radiation the astronauts would take. They also had a lot of shielding on the command module. You know, it wasn't just a piece of metal wrapped around the astronauts. They had a lot of shielding on their spacesuits, on the command module, the ship itself. They had an outer hull made of aluminium alloy, which provided the primary structure support and basic radiation shielding. The hull was about two and a half to five centimeters thick, depending on the location. It also had a heat shield on the bottom of the command module made of phenolic resin material. Now the purpose of the heat shield was for re-entry, but it still gave some protection against radiation. The astronauts also had personal dosimeters to monitor radiation exposure throughout the mission. This allowed NASA to track the cumulative dose and ensure it remains within safe limits. What does the dosimeter say? So they were always aware of the radiation and how much of a dose they could take. But like I said, they they minimized the, the amount of time spent traveling through that, that belt, the inner and the outer. You know, in the entire 72 hours, they spent one to two hours in that entire belt. But the, the point with the moon landing hoax, or the people who always uphold that theory that we didn't land on the moon, the Van Allen belt is always the biggest one they always come up with, that we cannot pass through the radiation of the Van Allen belt when we know that's not true. Yes, it's a dangerous region of space for us, at least, but due to shielding, due to time spent in the belt, the timing of the liftoff and the trajectory, it's all planned ahead and it's all safe. I say safe like that because, you know, it's not completely safe. But like I said, we uh, expose ourselves to radiation every single day, some good, some bad, and it's just a thing we have to overcome. And that is pretty much the Van Allen belt, basically. I know it's only short, but you know, there's not a lot more to say about it other than we did go through the belt and we can go through the belt. We expose ourselves to radiation every single day on our own planets with varying dangers. Before the moon missions, they worked on the Manhattan Project, which, you know, again, they they discovered the dangers of radiation. They've known, they knew decades before the moon missions about radiation and how to combat it. Not to completely make it safe, but they knew how to 
shield themselves against it just to make it through that belt. And you know, as the years go on, we're getting more advanced in the shielding of that stuff. And once again, I have no doubt we'll go through that belt back to the moon very soon, fingers crossed. I'm hoping they get a McDonald's up on there first or like a Taco Bell or something. Because when I go there, when I can afford it in about say 40 years time, hopefully I'll still be around because I'll have bionic implants or something. I want to go to the moon and I'm going to be traveling to the moon. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, we can only hope. But that is just a quick breakdown of why we did pass through the Van Allen Belt. Van Allen Belt, I have trouble saying that for some reason, it's really annoying. That was part three of the moon landing hoax, was not a hoax, something. I don't I don't want to call this. But anyway, that's it. Short video, I know, but it is what it is. Hope you enjoyed, leave a like if you like this video, leave something new to my channel, I do this quite often. I'll be back again soon with more moon landing stuff, more paranormal stuff. Like I said, the first two videos are linked down below if you want to go check them out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and bye for now.